Gene Sick. When I travel, I've got this little routine going. First, I start with the famous tourist spots. Then I like checking out the markets or parks when the weather's nice or on weekends. On floor, Today happens to be one such day. It's Saturday and the weather is lovely. Just seeing that grandma at the traditional market already made me really like this place. This indoor market, unlike the outdoor one I usually go to in good weather, feels more like a train station than a regular market. Did I get here too early? Many stores haven't opened it yet. I checked out the first floor, which mainly had groceries and then head it up to the second floor. Even on the second floor where they sell simple food and souvenirs, many places were still closed. There was Langos, one of the iconic Hungarian street foods that could make your blood sugar shoot up just from a quick glance. Seeing that many stores were still closed and they were less crowded, I thought, I left the market, which was also quieter than I had imagined, and moved on to my next stop. I love wandering around markets, not just for buying stuff, but to experience their vibrant atmosphere. It's ironic how these markets are also often tourist hotspots, and sometimes bigger markets can offer better prices. But just like I miss those cozy local bookstores that got replaced by big chains, I really hope traditional markets stick around and keep their special charm. I'm planning on hiking up to this statue on the hill. Although it's said to be a church built inside a cave, for some reason, I didn't consider going inside at the time. The trip that started with excitement has now been over a month. These days, Airbnb reservations and communication with the owner are all possible through messaging. While I have plenty of thoughts swirling around, it feels like it's been ages since I used my voice for meaningful conversations not just the usual stuff like ordering food or buying things. Despite my enjoyment of discovering new places and experiences, I find myself questioning if I truly love extended travel. This might explain why, despite the overall enjoyment of my travels, there is a subtle weight on my heart. Typically, travel is a break from daily routines, lightening the mind, but these longer trips seem to bring their own kind of mental load. As I was taking my time walking, thinking about this and that, I eventually made it to the statue, but it was under renovation. I heard this statue was put up by the Soviet army to mark when they kicked the German army out of Hungary. Seeing it now, it's like I can sense the Soviet era vibe.
I've felt somewhat disappointed today, both at the market and here. Traveling is full of surprises, and things don't always go as planned. I'm just thankful that nothing major went wrong. I'm going down the hill to check out the Gallot statue next. It's said that the hill is zone is known as Gallot Hill in honor of Gallot, Hungary's first mother. I couldn't reach the front of the statue, so this was all I could see. I thought I'd get a good view of the front from down the hill, but it was way up there at a stiff angle and this wall was the only thing I could see. A few days later, I flew a drone to see the front from afar. I took the tram to go to my next stop. And from the tram, I stumbled upon the Budapest Parliament building by accident, even though I had planned to visit it later as a must visit. This building in Budapest stands out just like the Empire State Building does it in Manhattan. I'm heading to the Margaret Island next, situated in the middle of the Danube River between Buda and Pest. As you step off the tram and cross the Margaret Bridge, you'll spot this island right ahead. Traveling requires a lot of navigation and planning, which can be a bit stressful. But in this vast park, I felt at ease just walking around. I knew that no matter which direction I took, I'd eventually find my way to the other side. Despite being a weekend, the whole island was exceptionally quiet, likely due to the winter season. Although I spotted a few people, the overall quietness made it feel like I had the entire island to myself. It's an odd feeling when a typical bustling place is eerily empty, reminiscent of the emptiness I experienced when Times Square was deserted during the pandemic. After unexpectedly passing by a small zoo on the island, I reached the ruins of a Dominican convent. If my time in Budapest had been shorter, I wouldn't have made it to this island. But with a relaxed schedule and plenty of time to spare, I felt like I was blending in between being a tourist and feeling like a local. During this trip, I realized the importance of choosing destinations where I can explore on foot while my legs are still functioning to some degree. While visiting during spring or fall would have been ideal, the tranquil calmness of winter wasn't too bad either. Budapest is famous for its thermal baths, and there are hotels on the island offering hot spring experiences. Although I've grown accustomed to solo travel, I don't feel quite ready to enjoy hot springs alone just yet. In the hustle and bustle of everyone's lives, I often find myself feeling the most liberated, like I'm the only one with time on my hands. That's the beauty of traveling. It opens up emotions and sights that were previously unseen and unfelt. I walked in through the south gate of the island, then headed out the north gate, crossing the bridge back to past for lunch. I 
I chose this place because I heard they offer authentic Hungarian dishes at a reasonable price. Was I expecting too much since I had to wait around 30 minutes for a table? Or maybe traditional Hungarian cuisine just is not my thing? As for the taste, the taste wasn't as impressive as I hoped and the meal ended up costing more than the 7-day transportation ticket I bought yesterday. So in terms of value for money, it wasn't exactly a steal. But compared to New York prices, everything here seemed quite affordable. The path I took back to my Airbnb to let my food settle after eating was through the Jewish quarter, tucked away just beyond the main tourist spots. You'd find plenty of trendy cafes. While eating, I had a quick chat with an elderly German couple. They said they came here for a dental treatment because it's much cheaper than in Germany. It reminded me of when I go back to Korea for an annual medical checkup. The funny part is it takes me 15 hours to fly from New York to Korea, but for them it's just an hour and a half from Germany. I hate to be a complainer, but today was one of those days where nothing went as planned. To shake off this feeling, I'm planning to explore the outskirts of Budapest tomorrow. Since Hungary and Slovakia are right next to each other, I heard I could even take a day trip to Slovakia. It's funny but even though I'm already in another country, I worry about not coming back the same day if I visit another one. So I'll just stick to somewhere close. Kessera sera, whatever will be, will be.